In this video I'll be covering Anubricon, the first boss in the Spiderwing. My name's Ciderhelm from Tankspot, and like the rest of these videos, these are intended for full guilds and raids rather than just for tanks, so feel free to repost them to your guild forums. Anubricon is all about movement and positioning. He's going to be in a large circular room designed for kiting. Because you're not going to see much of the raid throughout this movie, I'm going to take a couple minutes and explain positioning before jumping into the, before jumping into the actual encounter. Now right here is where Anubricon's going to be at the start of the encounter. You'll see that when we jump into the video here. And as a tank, I'm going to be facing him this way. You can choose either the left or right side. I choose the right side here. And you'll see why in a moment here. This is the kiting path. The tank needs to be aware of the kiting path. Stay as close to the inside as you can here. Don't hit the wall too many times or that will slow you down. Notice the slime debuff. This is why you don't ever want to touch the slime and no one in your raid does. It's mostly important for the kiter here. Uh, if you watch my health, it's dropping down a good 60% here, and then it also does additional damage on top of that. Crypt Fiends are always going to spawn from this back area near the green drapes here. Uh, no matter which side Anubricon is on, the Crypt Fiend will always spawn there and the off-tank will have to bring it back, ideally back to about between these two green ooze flows. This gives enough ra range so the uh, Impale that Anubricon does doesn't have a chance of hitting the uh, melee and the tank that are going to be on those adds. Then finally, the ranged who are going to be on top of, uh, or who are going to be handling at Nubricon, you want to be spread out. This is for healers and for casters. You want to be spread out in a semicircle around here, not all the way over to the side you're kiting on. But enough distance that you're spread out here. This is so the Impale doesn't hit multiple players at once, ideally. Same thing on the other side here. Now we'll jump into the actual movie here. I've just charged in. I'm going to move Nubricon back to the back of the room near the green drapes. Now I do a few things that are actually... This is not the best way to do this encounter. Notice my Feral Druid off tank is actually picking up the Crypt Fiend now, and he's going to start positioning him back there. Uh, I do not have any type of speed increase. You are going to want a speed increase here. Uh, I don't have run speed on boots, I don't have an aura, I don't have any means of actually moving faster here. I don't have a hunter uh, nearby who can buff me, so... Keep in mind that you, when you come in here, if you're going to be main tanking, you do want these buffs because they will allow you to entirely avoid the Locust Swarm. In this movie, I actually don't, and you'll see that it can be healed through. It's a little dangerous, though. Now, there was the Impale. Anubricon doesn't Impale. It may very well be possible that when he's casting this, you can sidestep it. It does have a short uh, cast time. Uh, so that's something to keep in mind. That said, he will do an Impale. Uh, people will be knocked up. They will take fall damage coming down. Please be aware of that. Healers. And I'm watching out for the Locust Swarm here. Now all of the ranged DPS, all of the DPS is going to be focusing on those Crypt Fiends as they come out. Uh, and they're going to be burned down, and now they've all moved back to Anubricon here to get DPS on Anubricon. Again, I'm watching out for this Locust Swarm. And I'm staying, I'm keeping my camera here as a tank, I'm keeping my camera here ready to go. I took an Impale there, that made his positioning a little worse, uh, actually quite a bit worse. There's the Locust Swarm, turn and run. Because I was closer after that Impale, the, uh, I am almost definitely going to take Locust Swarm ticks here and there. I just started to take them. Now the Locust Swarm is not only a stacking dot, the most important thing about the Locust Swarm is it's a silence. That means your healers, if they're too close to him, they're not going to be able to heal you. And if you're also taking that Locust Swarm, you will die uh, if the healers are unable to actually heal. So the healers don't actually want to be going along this kite path. They want to be at the other side waiting for you, or they want to be going around the other side of the uh, room altogether. And when you're doing the kite path on the right or left side, they're going to be on the opposite side doing the same path. Uh, or they could just run across, just as long as they're aware. You don't want to be within 40, 45 yards of him at any point. Now I've turned him around. I've gotten him ready here. There was a Crypt Fiend that spawned. Uh, I'll explain the Crypt Fiends while we do this here. The Crypt Fiends are adds that are fairly easy to take down. They have a stacking poison dot, uh, and that stacks every, I want to say, 10 seconds. Uh, 
so it can be cleared because the Crypt Fiends can be stunned. So if you time two very good stuns, yes, stuns do have diminishing returns here, so you've got to worry about that. Take a player with a large, with a long stun timer. Uh, have them stun it after on your off tank after they've gotten about five or six of the debuffs. And then the tank hopefully has a stun of their own or someone else does. Add another stun to it. That'll wear it off. You can almost always 100% of the time actually get it to wear off by stacking two stuns in a row. Uh, that makes it a lot easier for the healers. So the Crypt Fiend needs to be burned down by all the ranged, all of the melee DPS, unless you know your DPS, uh, unless you know you meet the DPS minimums on them and you want to have somebody on Anubricon the entire time. Uh, but that said, make sure the Crypt Fiends go down. When the Crypt Fiends actually die, uh, they will leave their corpse there, and then eventually he's going to spawn Corpse Scarabs out of that corpse. Uh, Anubricon's going to call for it, the corpse to explode. And when that happens, there are, I think, about five or six scarabs that are going to spawn. They're going to go to your... most likely they're going to go directly to your healer, uh, or they'll go anywhere. Uh, you can have your off-tank attempt to tank them, but the best thing to do is just have a mage or have a any kind of AoE class ready to take them, make sure people turn around and handle them. And the corpse scarabs aren't too big of a deal. Now, if anybody dies during this encounter, they will also spawn Corpse Scarabs, so it's something to keep in mind. If people are losing health, if they take a Locust Swarm, if they do something wrong, if they die, they also spawn the, uh, these Corpse Scarabs, and the Corpse Scarabs will can quickly, if you have too many people die, one person dies, and then say that was just enough damage with those Corpse Scarabs to kill another person, well, then you've got two sets of these Corpse Scarabs, and they may kill a third person, which, well, then you've got three sets of these Corpse Scarabs, and then maybe the one of these Crypt Fiend Corpses explodes, then you've got four sets. It's a quick way to wipe on this encounter if you start losing people. So keep people topped off as often as possible. See a couple corpse scarabs there. Uh, there are a few things about kiting here. Kiting is the most important part of this encounter. There's a few things about kiting. Now in my case, one of the things I could have done without any kind of run speed, I could have had someone behind me and used an intervene on them. Uh, there's a whole lot of different things you can do. There are little tricks you can. As long as you don't have a Corpse Scarab, you can still have a Hunter apply the aura and you'll get a run speed increase. They'll just stay behind on the other side. Uh, not the other more obvious way of doing this is to have a run speed increase. So, you have got a couple ticks of the Locust Swarm here. Healer's ready on me. This can be a longer encounter depending on the level of the DPS you have in there, uh, because the corpse, the Crypt Fiends, if you don't have the DPS to bring them down quickly, it has an adverse effect on what you're doing in the encounter. If you can't bring them down, say, in 20 or 30 or 40 seconds, if you can't bring them down that fast, uh, eh, maybe 50 seconds is safe, then you lose a whole lot more DPS time on a Nubricon. It's It scales and up in a way that is very bad for initial raid groups. So make sure that you've got some very good DPS in the raid, uh, that people understand what's going on. Now I'll be turning them around momentarily. If you are a, uh, if you're the off tank and you can't deal it depends on, obviously, it depends on your spec, it depends on what you're doing. If you're the off-tank and you can't deal a whole lot of melee damage, one of the things that helps here is to have the off-tank actually go off to the range, take up another range slot so the Impale will potentially be targeted at them, uh, at the off-tank, and won't hit other melee there. So, something to keep in mind, I tend to try to level up my gun skill there, if I'm off-tanking. You're going to quickly see out of the uh, Feralina movie as well. The spider wing is, gives a few examples of what not to do uh, in our guide movies here. There's a run speed here. And thank you for watching our video guide. If you have any questions, regardless of your class, please feel free to stop by tankspot.com and ask away.